Uh, welcome everyone. So this is our 115th live stream geometry. Uh, we have me and five other people here with us now. Um, and today I am going to do problems from the USA team selection test selection test. So this is like the round right before the team selection test. Uh, so it should be fun. Um, so if you'd like to join us in the future, feel free to email me at mgreend801 at gmail.com. Uh, we meet every Sunday at 8 a.m. U.S. Central Time. All right, so I'm going to share my screen. Uh, here's the first question. This one's from 2011. Uh, it doesn't look super hard, so we'll see how long it takes us. Um, but I think there's some harder ones after this. So uh, we have the circumcenter and orthocenter. That's going to be O and H. Um, so I'm going to use my tool for this. Um, so this will give us the ortho center and we can call it H. Um, M and N are the midpoints of A, B, and AC. That's M. That's N. And then you have MH and NH uh, meet the circle at P and Q. And let's see. So this is P. This is Q. Uh, let's make these just segments. And MN and PQ meet at R. And we want to show that OA is perpendicular to RA. So this looks kind of familiar. Um, it's the same as saying that RA is tangent to the circle. And we know, we know that the circumcircles of MAN and ABC are, are tangent because those are homothetic. Um, so, yeah, maybe this will be an easy problem. Let's see. So, I'm going to draw this circle. And it passes through O because these are both right angles. Um, and we want to show, basically, we want to show R has the same power with respect to these two circles. So basically, we want to show that PQMN is cyclic. I think that would solve the problem. Yeah, because then uh, by the radical axis theorem, um, that would prove that R is tangent. So how do we show PQMN is cyclic? Uh, that's the same as saying that PH times HM is QH times HN. Um, There's a couple ways to think about it. So we want to show PQMN is cyclic. That would solve the problem. And what can we say about HN? So we know if you reflect H about the side, it lies on the circle. Um, So what if I reflect this and reflect this? I'm just curious, those two points, if we can say anything about them. Uh, I'm not 
not sure. I'm going to hide those. Oh, well, we know PQBC is cyclic. But yeah, I don't know if it follows that PQMN is cyclic uh, right away. I was thinking like Rhymes theorem, but... Don't know if it's that easy. Or if we could do a homophily about so let me see something. So Oh, so this is actually the antipode of B, and this is actually the antipode of C. I think that probably will solve the problem, if I had to guess. Because HN times HQ would be half of that times HQ. Yeah, so that, should, that solves the problem. Uh, yeah, so USA, TST, TST. This is, so there's first the math Olympiad. Uh, th this is the round after the math Olympiad. And then there's one more test, and then there's the IMO. So yeah, this is different from the, the USAMO. Um, but, so yeah, I just solved the problem. Um, but yes, this is different. So basically, um, if we let this meet it at B prime and this meet it at C prime, uh, we know that B prime and C prime are the antipodes um, because the orthocenter, the midpoint, and the antipode are collinear. That's a well-known fact. So, hey, Leah, thanks for joining. Um, so I just solved this problem. Um, so, yeah, this is one of the easier problems, but we'll get to the harder ones. Um, so let's write it up. Okay, so the first, first we're going to let QH and PH uh, meet the circle at B prime and C prime. Um, yeah, I wish this thing didn't pop up, but I don't know how to stop it. Let QH and PH meet the circle again at B prime and C prime. All right. Then uh, it's well known. So uh, so B prime is going to be the antipode of B, and C prime is going to be the antipode of C. Um, O to B. Or I guess for people that don't know what the antipode is, I'll just say that BB prime is a diameter and CC prime is a diameter. Um, and that's well known since uh, H, M, and the antipode of, uh, or H, N, and the antipode of B are collinear.
B for 20 here. And then same for C. Okay. So um, now we can basically use PowerPoint. So, uh, and it's also well known that N is the midpoint of HB prime and M is the midpoint of HC prime. So, it's also well known. So, N is the midpoint of HB prime and M is the midpoint of uh, HC prime. So now we can use power of a point. So QH times HB prime equals PH times HC prime. And that's the same as saying that QH times two, um, what is it? QH times two HN is equal to PH times two uh, HM. And that just means that QH times HN is equal to PH times HM. And that means that we have a cyclic quadrilateral. So, uh, so QM and PN is cyclic. Okay. So we know that this is cyclic. That uh, looks like QN is rejoining us. And now we can use the radical axis theorem. So, um, First, I'm going to note that the circuit circle of AMN and ABC are tangent. So, so, so I'll say uh, AMN is homothetic to ABC with ratio half. And that means that uh, the circumcircles of ABC and uh, AMN are tangent at A. Okay, and now we can apply the radical axis theorem. So by the radical axis theorem on AMN, ABC, and PQMN, or QMPN, so... ABC, AMN, and uh, QMPN. Uh, the tangent at A to uh, ABC and AMN passes through R. And looks like we have another person joining passes through R. Let me fix this. And once we know that, um, that means angle RAO is 90. And that means OA is perpendicular to RA. Um, Actually, I'll just write that out. That means OA is perpendicular to RA because um, basically if uh, RA is tangent, then OA has to be perpendicular to RA. Uh, anyone have any questions on this proof? All right. So yeah, it is 9.15. So we did that in just uh, 15 minutes. And here is the second problem. So this one's from 2012. Uh, we have a triangle ABC that's inscribed in a circle. 
and we draw the bisector of angle A. And it intersects side, so we draw both the intersection of um, side BC at D, and it also intersects the circle at L. So, whoops, this is D, this is L. So I don't know if we're going to end up using the in center x center lemma. Um, M is the midpoint of BC. So this is M. And then we draw the circumcircle of ADM. And we want to see where it intersects AB and AC. So it's P and Q. Or Q and P, they say. So this will be P. This will be Q. And we draw the midpoint of PQ. This is an interesting diagram. So that should be N. H is the perpendicular from L to ND. This is a little strange, but interesting. I wonder if it uh, if it lies on the circle. So maybe maybe we'll end up proving that. But it looks like that might be true. Yes. Okay. Let's just make sure that that's, that's true for any configuration. Okay. So this would be H. I don't know why it lies on the circle yet. Um, so we'll see uh, why that's true. Um, whoops. So yeah, it might be better to, well, let's see first. So, I mean, that's the same as saying, If that were true, oh, I wonder if these are cyclic right here. So, uh, yeah, it looks like it. So, there's a couple things we have to prove, but like, can we prove that E is the midpoint of arc uh, BAC? Uh, that's something that will be good to prove. Um, so, H. So, we want to show that ML is tangent to the circumcircle of H and N. And I bet once we show this is the diameter, maybe it won't be that hard to prove. All right. Uh, hold on just a sec. I'll be right back. All right, I am back. Um, uh, I think we can easily prove that E is the midpoint of our PC. Okay. So uh, I'll let that uh, E is the midpoint of up, and now I'll prove that uh, A, D, M, E is cyclic. A, D, A, D, M, E? Yeah, uh, yeah A, D, M, E, I mean the circle is pa passed through E. Okay. So, uh, which is equivalent that we need to show that uh, BQ is equal to CP, and then that's well known that the circle pass through E. Okay. So, basically, 
Um, first, we define everything like this, and then it's not hard to show this is cyclic because these are both right angles, right? Um, but then you're showing P and Q lie on this circle, right? Yeah. Um, okay. So we can prove that BQ is equal to CP. Uh, PQ is equal to uh, what? No, B, 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 Q, B, Q. Oh, BQ equals CP. Okay. Yeah, yeah. All right. Um, okay. Um, so, and is that, that's because this is an angle bisector. So, um, so yeah, BQ equals DP, um, because we know that this is cyclic, AQ, DP, um, and that's an angle bisector. Okay. So, um, All right, so let me think about this. So, so, so like first we know that AEDM is cyclic, right? Um, and then we wanna show P and Q lie on the circle. And I agree we can show DQ equals DP. Um, so, So yeah, maybe we could let E prime be the midpoint. So yeah, we could call this like E prime. That's the midpoint of arc BAC. We know that A, D, M, E prime is cyclic. Um, and we want to show P and Q lie on that circle. Um, we know that D Q equals D P. The only thing is that would also be true for any other, like, like even if we define P and Q to be like, so P and Q lie on the circle circle ADM, but if we picked, let's say this circle, that would still be true that the distance from D to this point would be the distance at this point. Uh, so oh, I mean, uh, improving B Q equals C P. Oh, B, Q equals C, P, that's right. Yeah, yeah. That's like a well-known lemma, so... Uh... Um, so, let's see. How do we prove that? Is Are there some, like, congruent triangles? So, B, Q equals C, P is... Oh, okay. That's like a, a spiral... Because we're saying, like, a spiral similarity. We Like, E prime Q, B would be congruent to E prime P, C, basically. Um... We know that E prime B equals E prime C. Um, and then uh, we know these angles are equal. Um, hmm. But, but, um, so let's see. So the thing is, the way P and Q are defined, it's like not in terms of E prime, right? So I, I guess it matters how we're defining things, right? So if uh, if we know P and Q lie on this circle, um, then it's easy to show um, that BQ equals CP. But if we don't already know that P and Q, well, there's a circle A, E prime, D, M, and then there's a circle A, Q, D, M, P. Um, hmm. uh, so A, E prime, D, M is one circle, and then A, uh, Oh, I think I see how it works. Okay, so, all right, I got a little confused. Okay, so let we could just we could just call this E. So let E uh, be the midpoint. 
So, so I'm guessing it's probably just an easy angle chase once we've shown all this. So let, let E be the midpoint of our BAC. Um, then we will show that A, E, B, M is cyclic, and therefore P and Q have to line up that same circle. Okay. And then once we know that, we have B, Q equals P, C. Um, and well, then I guess it's kind of obvious that these are perpendicular. Um, Okay, and then to show that this is tangent, that's just the same. Uh, let's see. So that last step, I don't think it should be that hard, but let's see. Yeah, I, that should just be an angle chase. Okay, so let E be the midpoint of arc BAC. Um, then L, E, M, and L are collinear. And, uh, angle E, A, D equals angle E, M, D equals 90. That means that uh, EADM is cyclic. And that means that uh, EAQDMP is cyclic. So okay. Um and So that's the first step. Then we could show that these are uh, perpendicular, not too difficult, because since this is an angle bisector, uh, dq equals dp. And so therefore, uh, since this is the diameter, because dme is 90, then eq, uh, then, then they're perpendicular. So, so dme, so I'll say dm equals 90 implies d e is a diameter. Diameter of that circle. And and then dp equals dq um, since ab is an angle bisector. That means that uh, by symmetry, um, DE is perpendicular to PQ. And then that means that um, that means that E and D and H are collinear. So yeah, we're working backwards here a lot. Okay, once we know that, it should just be an angle chase. So let me let me write this out in my notebook. Um, see if I can figure it out. Um, so we want to show angle H A M. Uh, Actually, maybe it's a little trickier. We want to show angle HNM is equal to angle HML. And HNM. HNM is NEM 
plus angle NME HML is HDL which uh, is AVE which is AME okay so which is 90 minus A and B. N E M, uh, so N M E is 90 minus I think I got it. So angle NME we want to show is the same as angle NHM, but NHM is is uh, DHM, which is DLM. So it's the same as showing that um, I think we just have to show some similar triangles, right? Um, Wait, now I'm a little confused. So we want to show that this angle, I think we want to show NM, NM and AL are parallel. Um, yeah. So if we show that, it would solve it. Um, Yeah, it's equivalent. And and, and that's that's kind of obvious because because E N over E D um like should equal E M over E L because E Q D P is similar to E B L C. So that's one way to see it. Uh, and that would solve the problem. Uh, but I wonder if there's a simpler way to do it. Um Maybe that is the best way to do it. So yeah, it works. Um, so so EQ so by a spiral similarity uh, at E. Uh, we basically have EQDP is similar to EBLC. Um, so EQDP is similar to um, EBLC. And basically, that means that EN over ND uh, is EM over ML, which means that NM is parallel to DL. Um, did I write that out right? Yeah. And 
then once we know that, it's an angle chase because thanks. Um, because then NME is DLE, uh, which is DLM, which is DMHM. So yeah, so so. DLE, which uh, is DLM, which is DHM. DHM, which is angle NHM. And that means that ML is tangent to HMN. But yeah, I wonder if I need the spiral similarity or if there's a way to do it without that. Like it doesn't feel like it should be necessary, but I don't know. Um, yeah, I'm just going to look at it for like another minute, see if there was another way to do it. Um, Yeah, maybe that is the best way to do it. All right, so let's try the next problem. Um, this one I think is probably harder. It's 2017, uh, so it's later on. And there's a lot of, I feel like in circles are usually harder. So, uh, so we draw the in circles of uh, ABD and ACD, where D is any point. Uh, so let's, let me use that. So I'm going to have to rename some things. So I got lucky that this was E actually, but this I'll rename it F. And what should I call this? I don't know. Oh, but there's already a P actually. So I'll call it R. Uh, let P be the intersection of AD with the line joining the centers. So yeah, this is going to be probably a harder problem. Uh, so this is P. And X is the intersection of BI and CP. Uh, oh, I didn't draw the in-center. So what I could do, the in-center is going to be where these intersect because these are both the angle bisectors. So I is the in-center. And look at, isn't that convenient? It's already I. Okay. Um, oh, but maybe I should draw the whole ray. So BI and CP. So B, I, and C, P, and then B, P, and C, I. So yeah, I probably don't need the whole ray. I could just do, um, with uh, the segment going up to I. Okay. So this should be X. Well, no, this should be Y, and this should be X, and we want to show EX and FY, F meet on the in circle. So let's let's draw the in circle. And let me make things look a little nicer. Uh, 
did the n circle become q? Oh, because it was i before. I think I need to do this. There we go. No more point q. So get this and this and this and this and what is r i don't even know what r is in this diagram oh r is where this circle's tangent k is where this one's tangent so we want to show that ex and fy uh, meet on the end circle interesting So yeah, how, how would you do that? Maybe we should let EX and FY meet at S, uh, and then we try to show that S lies on the in circle. So we try to show that like, uh, yeah, I'm not sure. Let's see, hide this. So yeah, there's a lot going on in this problem. Move this there. What happens if we move D around? Oh, interesting. So if we move D, it looks like S is the same point. Uh, that's really interesting. Uh, is SIM good? Uh, that is a good question. Yeah, it looks so. Yeah, it looks like S is the antipode of M. So obviously AS meets it at the X touch point. Um, I wonder if this, I wonder if PY is perpendicular uh, to FS and PX is perpendicular to ES. That looks true. Oh, it's actually not, well, yeah, it's not true. So yeah, really, we, we just need to show Fy passes through the topmost point. So we could probably hide a lot of the diagram, right? Then we don't need point E. We don't need, uh, well, we still need point P. So we kind of do need this circle. We just don't need this segment. Uh, I'll just keep it there just for the heck of it. I wonder if x, y is parallel to bc, um, or maybe even hl. So let's see. I don't think it's parallel. Oh, are both hl and x, y parallel to bc? I think so. Uh, OK, so x, y is not parallel to bc, but it might be parallel to hl. 
So let's see. Oh no, it's not probability either. It's very close though. So yeah, none of the three are parallel, right? Uh, this looks, maybe HL is parallel, even though XY isn't. No, it's not. Okay. No, yeah, because if XY was parallel, D would be the midpoint of BC by Chavez's theorem. So. But yeah, maybe we could work backwards. Like maybe we could let S be the top of this point, and we could pick a point F on BC. We let them meet up by. Um, yeah, actually, I don't know if it's that easy. Uh, does pH equal PL? Maybe, maybe we have like a parallelogram. Oh, that's really interesting. This looks like a nine point circle. Or could this be a nine point circle? No, because H is not a midpoint. But yeah, this is, uh, let's see. Oh, no, H and L don't. It, DMHL is not cyclic. I got tricked. Let's see. Now it looks like it is again. So what, am I just getting tricked? No, it looks like it is cyclic, DLHM. Uh, so it's cyclic. I don't think P is the midpoint of HL. Uh, no, but somehow that we could prove that that's cyclic. Yeah, I, I feel like we, maybe that's just an angle chase. So we want to show that, so we know that uh, angle H M B. Oh, maybe it's not that obvious. But this feels very familiar. So like, we want to show M, D, H, and L are cyclic. And I feel like we might have shown this on the channel before. I just don't remember how we did it. Uh, we can show that uh, HML is 90 degrees. We, we could show that, oh, HML is 90 degrees. I don't know, is that trivial or not? No. But yeah, that's one way to prove it. Yeah, if we try to show it. Um,
So yeah, basically as we move D around, HML is always 90. We want to show that. Um, Then even if we show that, yeah, I'm not sure how it helps solve the problem, but it's still interesting. Maybe is E, X, Y, F cyclic? No. Uh, those aren't equal. Um, I wonder if we could somehow use the SARGs. Uh, I'm not sure. Yeah, it's tricky. Because, yeah, the way P is defined is just very random. Uh, let's see. So is P, P is not really the midpoint. Yeah, that's the hard part is point P. Uh, I don't really know a great way to use uh, how point P is defined. Uh, but basically, we want to so we want to show HL as a diameter. Um, And I wonder if we draw the ray MP. Uh, let me try something. I reflect M across HL. Oh, so it looks like, uh, let me, it looks like AD intersects this circle at the reflection of M over HL. So basically, I would mean HL bisects angle APM. So maybe we could prove that. I feel like that gives us some good information. Yeah. 
Yeah, that's really interesting. Uh, I don't think that's actually tangent, but, uh, oh, is that actually tangent? Yeah, because since this is tangent, this would have to be tangent, right? if, if it really were the reflection. So that's interesting. Uh, and then by symmetry, okay, so, so if we draw the ray instead of just a segment, it would have to be like tangent to both. So I feel like we're we're getting somewhere now. So this is one point of tangent C, and this is the other. So there's like a symmetry almost. So these should be collinear. I don't th think that helps that much. Um, maybe EM equals DF. Uh, let's see. Interesting. Let's see if that's really true. Yes. That was a lucky guess. Okay, so EM equals DF. Um, so yeah, that and that doesn't depend on a lot of stuff in the diagram. So it seems like that should be easier to prove. Um, Is that just a length chase? It might be. So it's the same as saying ED equals MF, or there's a couple different ways to write it. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna write it out and see I can prove it. But so that means D is also um, I wonder what the in the center of S E F is. I don't think it's anything special, but so EM equals DF, I feel like that's pretty important. Uh, once we can prove that, does that help us solve the problem? Um, which is what we could do. We could draw this point right here. You know, this is where the X circle touches BC. Um, so if EM equals DF and DM equals CV, can that help us in any way?
so it's 10 o'clock. Um, let's try something. So if EM equals DF, what is that the same as saying? That's the same as saying that, uh, like can we write that in terms of areas, the area of EMS over the area of SMF is EM over MF and that's FD over DE, something like that. So yeah, we've noticed a couple different things that we haven't proven yet. Um, it's probably easiest to define Maybe we could even use Monge's theorem somehow. So P is the in similla center of these two circles, right? And then B and C are like the X similla center. Uh, but yeah, actually I'm not sure about that. So yeah, for my first question is if we draw a B, is it obvious that um, if we reflect it over line P, so we know a B is tangent to both. Uh, if we knew H L was a diameter, then we could reflect it over H L, but but would we know it would pass through point M? That's the question. Um, This is interesting. So M M prime is perpendicular to H L. Uh, is that obvious? Yeah, this is hard. Uh, I'm just gonna first try to show this is cyclic for the fun of it. So.
So angle HML, if you want to calculate that. Um, Let's try for like 10, 15 more minutes, and then maybe we can move on to the next one. Um, yeah, if we don't make more progress. What if I label this point? Is just a random guess, but uh, no, so those aren't collinear. So if we look at triangle PMD, this is one X circle, and this is another X circle. Uh, and this is would be an angle bisector. Um, so we have two X circles. Um, what can we do with that? Okay, so if we knew, like basically, if we knew this was tangent to both, um, then it would follow that this is 90 degrees. So, but that's kind of going in circles. Um, Yeah, this is hard. Let's try actually for just like five more minutes. And maybe we can go back to it later. Um, so we'd have angle HAL is angle BAI. I don't know if that helps. Um, So basically, we have some isogonal lines. Uh, maybe we could use the isogonal line lemma. So BAH equals IAL. Um, Ah, 
So Johannes is joining us. Maybe he'll have an idea. All right. Hey, Johannes, thanks for joining. Hello. So we're on our third problem. Uh, the first two we solved pretty quickly. And then this one we've been on for a little while. Um, so basically you pick an arbitrary point B on BC and you draw the end circles of ABD and ACD and it, if you connect their centers, it meets AD at point P. Um, and we already noticed a few things with just that configuration. So, but, so there's more to the problem than that. Um, so then you let CP meet BI at X and you let BP meet CI at Y. And then we want to show EX and FY intersect on the end circle. So we kind of just assume that. Uh, well, the diagram makes it look true, but really we have to prove it. Um, but we notice they intersect actually at the antipode of M, so like the topmost point of the end circle. Um, so there's a lot of stuff we noticed, but we haven't proven. Uh, like we noticed that this is cyclic, HMDL but we couldn't prove it. Um, and we noticed also that uh, if you reflect M over HL, uh, then it's an intersection of AD with this circle. We also have proven that. So yeah, a lot of stuff. We also notice that EM equals DF, and we also haven't proven that. So a lot of stuff we've noticed, we have proven. <laughs> but EM equals MT and DF equals DK. So that would mean that MT equals DK. Uh, and I don't know. That's helpful. I wonder if we ever get if we could get t equals k equals, so I guess, what if we set d equal to m? Is the problem obvious then? Because uh, we've never really looked at it for a special case. But if d equals m, um, we know w, um, So then O N and the tangent at W and B C would be collinear. Uh, so so if D equals M, is it obvious that these circles are tangent at a point on A M? Uh, Yeah, I think you can just um, calculate the like the length of that tangent, and it's just the same because uh, well, because it um, B M minus B A is C M minus C A, just because uh, M is the touch point of the end circle. Okay. So yeah, then that would be, then those would be tangent uh, on AM. And then uh, would it be obvious that M, so then it would be clear that M equals MF because uh, 
Well, yeah, that's what you just said. And then, and then angle EUF would be a right angle. Um, and so then the problem would be equivalent basically to showing that, um, well, yeah, we'd want to show EX and FY would meet at the topmost point of the inner circle. So I guess really we only need to prove it for one of them. Um, Uh, one sec, I'll be right back. All right, thanks for waiting. So I've had a similar problem a while ago, and I think I can prove that, like this uh, circle HMDL, mm -hmm. uh, but it uses moving points. So, right. yeah, okay. we actually we actually want to pr prove this claim that uh, MP is the other common tangent. Um, and for that, we treat uh, the two in circles of like ABD and ADC as fixed. And then we move A on one of their common tangents. And uh, that way, M and D are also fixed. And we want to show, and also H and L are fixed. And then we want to show that the, um, that when we go from A to B, just like, because uh, we have a tangent and then we go from b uh, we project b through h which is fixed onto the line like m s or m i or what like the perpendicular uh, through m and then we do the same thing for point uh, through point c uh, and then projecting through l we want to show that that is uh, the same point and the special case i had recently was where these two in circles also had to have the same radius but I'm pretty sure it just works as well. Interesting. Okay. Um, so, but so I haven't actually fixed, looked at it. Sorry. So we fix these two circles, you're saying? Mm -hmm. um, and then we fix. Uh, so then so then this common tangent is determined. So then B, do we fix B and C or? Uh, no, we we just fix like uh, M and D, like we choose which one is which. We have two common tangents and uh, one exterior tangent. Um, and these are just the intersections. Okay, uh, so but you, we, fix, we, you fix M and D and then you move A around that determines B and C? Yeah. Interesting. Okay. But A moves on this tangent through D. Um, and then... Uh, from A to B, that's actually projective. Um, just oh. just the tangent to the circle around H. Um, okay, so, uh, sorry, you want me to draw something? Uh, no, I no. Uh, like uh, the projective transformation from the line from this tangent through d this interior tangent to to the exterior tangent like to md uh, that takes a to b every time like a to the second intersection of the tangent from a to the circle oh so you're saying uh, as i that move a along as i move a along the tangent um B would stay fixed. Well, in this case, these circles are moving, but in, 
we yeah. fix the circles, yeah. If we fix the circles, then A to B is projective. Um, and since H stays fixed, if we project uh, from this like base of the triangle, from MD, to this perpendicular uh, through M, like the perpendicular to MD through M, we want to project onto that, and we just project through H because that's also fixed. That's just the center of a fixed circle. Um, and then we we want to show that if we do this, like projecting to B and then through H to to this line, or if we uh, project to C and then through L to this line, we get the same point because then that's just the in center and uh, we're done. Okay. Um... Let me think about that for a second. Okay, so so basically we're projecting through uh, H onto this perpendicular line, or is it X? I forget. No, through H, because H stays fixed, right? H is just the center of the circle, and we're fixing the circle. Yeah. Okay. So. Um. I I'm just thinking because, like, we want to show that S I M infinity is harmonic. So if we project this through H, then we get. B, M, uh, E, and this point, right? Or, uh, is that what uh, you're... At the moment, I'm just trying to prove this uh, circle, HMDL, or rather that like M is the uh, intersection of the other common tangent with uh, BC. Okay. That is just the thing I'm trying to prove right now. Um, and like we just need uh three special cases, and I haven't really looked at that yet, but that should there should just be uh be three cases. Okay, so um you start out with with these two circles, and then uh M and D, or or or, or you draw the common tangent uh to the two circles. Um, and then, um, so M is defined to be the other, on the other common tangent, right? So the intersection of, uh, EF with the other common tangent. So, yeah. so, so okay. So D and M are like at first defined symmetrically, but then you move A along this common tangent. And then, so B and C are a function of, of A, right? That's what you're saying. Yeah. And a projective one, which is important. A projective function. Um, and uh, P, so P is always going to be the same point. Yeah. Um, we want to show that, uh, like, I is uh, that we basically, we want to show that the angle bisectors, in this case of A, B, let's, let's say A, B, C, and A, C, B uh, intersect on this perpendicular line uh, through M. Okay, to, no matter where the... A is. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. Because that would mean just that like I is on that line and uh, M is actually the uh, in the point of like the in circle tangency point. Yeah. Interesting. Okay. So we want to show that those angle bisectors always uh, lie on that perpendicular, and you're saying if we show it for three different cases, then by moving points, it would be true in general. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, yeah, I don't know if we want to so, do D equals M, D equals B, and D equals C, or something like that. So there's one special case. Um, no, we, we don't want to move D. We want to move A Sorry. Uh, is, is the thing. Uh, okay, so okay can, that's maybe a little hard to do. 
should, should I redraw this diagram um, so that we can move A and C where the rest lands? Probably. Yeah. That's that's probably easier. Let me see. Okay. So, yeah, maybe I could do it in a different window just so we don't lose this. Um, um, and the advantage is also that we don't like need most of the clutter. Yeah, that, that's like actually that, that we will only need for the problem later. So we take two circles. Um, we draw common tangents. And uh, we pick a point um, So this was like one common tangent, and then, okay, so then we basically we we take a moving point on this this ray, right? So J is kind of like a a little bit. Yeah. Um, let me make, try to make it so it's uh, maybe something like that. Yeah, I'm trying to make this more vertical, sort of. Um, okay. And then we would take the two tangents. We take the tangents from this to there and this to here. Okay, so let's let's try to make it and that is something that like GeoGebra might mess up at some point. Like, uh, it, it might happen that it will start just taking the other um, intersection of these tangents. Like maybe B, like the point that we're marking now, will sometimes just move to I for no reason. Um, wow. But like, yeah, that's not really anything you can do about that. I think, except like you could do weight construction with like polars and that. Uh you you'd probably run into the same problem. I'll just okay. try it like this for now. Okay, so these circles are fixed, and basically we draw the perpendicular uh, from H to this, and we want to show that the angle bisectors intersect on it. However, however we move. Gym. And we and we want to we want to like we we don't really want to talk about angle bisectors. Yeah. Uh, because that's always weird. We just say like uh, K A and L C. Oh, sorry. What did you say? Oh, are you trying to speak? I can't. Um, I don't know if it's something with your mic. But yeah, you could t if you're trying to speak. Um... Oh yeah, I think I was gone for a second. Oh, that's all right. Um, but instead of the angle bisectors, were you thinking about just saying K A and L C? Exactly. Yeah. Okay, so we want to show K A and L C uh, meet on that perpendicular, but as those are always going to be like the angle bisectors as long as we move J, right? Yeah. Okay. Okay, and a, and the first good special case is just the intersection with this other exterior common tangent. Um, but I think maybe even both work. But if we move J to, to this, like down to where it hits the upper common tangent, so basically, J to G, or uh, we move to No, A. like to such that G is the midpoint of JI. OK. So if we, like, OK, so if we move J so that G is the midpoint of JI. Like, so that J is on this common tangent, the other, the upper one. Um, yeah. And then. The two lines that we want to show uh, intersect on this perpendicular are just the same one. Okay. 
So I guess if they're the same line, their intersection is kind of undefined, right? But maybe we can do some kind of a mm. limiting argument, like as Jay gets... Uh, we, we don't need to because we're just saying um, we have like two points. Basically, one is the intersection of one of these lines with this perpendicular line. And the other is like the other intersection, and we want to show that those are the same, and that's still well defined. Um, okay. Oh, because we're just intersecting, we're just showing they intersect at the same point. We're intersecting yeah. one with this line and then the other with this line. So it's okay. Yeah. So it is um, well defined because then it's just where AC intersects that line. Okay. So that's one special case. Um, Maybe the other special case is if J equals I. I don't know if there'll be some like. Yeah, I think GeoGebra messes that up, uh, but we can still. And then what about J equals G? Uh... Okay. Yeah, I think these should both work, but I'm... it's a little difficult if GeoGebra. Yeah. Oh, if J equals G, then like uh, the two points just they are both just uh h so like k and l are just are just both h in that case yeah. and that's good because like then a l and k kc just intersect you know in, in h which is on the line we want to show yeah um and then if, so that's and then if j if j equals k or if j equals I I would assume it's similar. Uh, if J if J equals I, then the points then K is E and L is F. Um so that's a little bit of a special case of this, like uh of the argument that um the transformation from J to K is projective. It kind of defines them as E and F in this case. And then the lines uh, a K C L, they are just parallel, and they are both parallel to the line we want. So that's also good in order. Interesting. Okay, so that proves um, that proves that um, these two uh, B H and C L intersect on this perpendicular, um, and then. That would be the in center. Okay. So, and then does that also prove that this is cyclic? Yeah. Uh, well, I don't know about M prime. I'm not exactly sure how that's defined, but um, we took M to be this point on the interior tangent, like this intersection of one interior and one exterior tangent. Um, and then we prove that M is, in fact, uh, the point of tangency of the in circle of this triangle ABC. So this is really the same point we're talking about. But now uh, the circle, like HMDL is just the, that's just always true. If we have two um, two circles, like their midpoints, uh, the intersection of one interior and one exterior tangent. And like, uh, if we take the tangents from one midpoint to the other circle, those touch points, they are all just on a circle. That's just the circle uh, with diameter HL now. Okay, so it's kind of like the in center x center lemma, or not quite. Um, uh, yeah, I think so. You can it, also just like calculate the angle, like HML is ninety. Is, yeah, is, that. yeah. Is this is because you have to. This would be an internal. This is an angle bisector of this, and this is an angle bisector of this. So yeah, that would prove that that's ninety. Okay, so that would mean that this is cyclic. Okay, so then we would just. Then we would, uh, okay, so that would be the first step. Uh, so we've proven like a whole bunch of stuff. Um, now we just have to show that EX and FY pass through S. Um, okay. So yeah, fix omega b and omega c. Uh, draw the internal and external tangents. Um, 
and then let A move along one of those internal tangents, then B and C are a projective function of A. Um, and if we drop a perpendicular from M to B, C, then where B, H meets it as a projective function of B, and where C, H, C, L meets it as a projective function of C. So um, if we could show it's true in three cases, then that would prove um, that they always meet M at, they always meet that perpendicular line at the same point. Um, okay, so we that's the first part. Um, and now, yeah, EX and FY, let's see if we can figure that out. Um, Let me try something. Okay. So we noticed EM equals DF. Um, that would be true. Uh, I think you said that's true just by calculating yeah, the lengths. Yeah. Uh, that's also like another thing that's just always true about if we have like uh two circles and we draw like all the interior and exterior tangents, um, there's a bunch of symmetry. Like, yeah. Yeah. And particularly M equals yeah. I think that gives us like a much easier way to prove that M is actually on this interior tangent. Oh, really? Uh, wait, I'm not, I'm not entirely sure, but uh, it might just be that we can just check EM equals DF by calculating it. Or maybe I'm just completely. Oh, so, so you're saying mm -hmm. if we can show EM equals DF a different way, then that would prove basically that this is cyclic yeah maybe i just maybe it just doesn't work but we should be able to, uh yeah maybe not i don't know gonna try it try something.
I was thinking maybe Menelaus, like maybe we could show BE over BM as XF, so or XE, but that doesn't look that easy. Um, but, or yeah, maybe projected geometry, like, so if we take SIM infinity, we want to show it's harmonic. So we could project through either X or H. I'm not sure which is better. Uh, if we project X, then we have to drop a perpendicular. Uh, so I think maybe H. So then we want to show BME. And we have to intersect SH with BM. And we want to show that that's harmonic. Wait, I wonder if uh, I, X, H, and B is harmonic now. Um, I think that's equivalent uh, because if we project um, MSI infinity through X, then we get uh, ME the foot of the foot from X and B. And uh, we project through X. Uh, and then if we just pr uh, like project at the point at infinity on this, like uh, that's perpendicular to BC, uh, to be I, it's then we just trying, get... Yeah, we, we just move everything vertically upwards and it's yeah, the same yeah. as BX, HI is harmonic, right? Yeah. Yeah. And... Is that just the same as saying that I, P, H, Y, and L, X concur? think so. Yeah. Looks a little weird, but yeah, I think it's the same as showing that. So yeah, I don't know if we can use Chavez theorem or something like that. Um, So if we project through C onto AD, let's say, uh, oh, but where would CH go? That's the thing. Um, it's also it's also the same as showing. Well, actually, I was thinking about projecting through M. Um, but yeah, it's just not clear where X would go then. Um, we project through P. I think we can just like project in a circle. Um, we already have that uh, M S I infinity is equal to um, I H B X, and that is equal to I L Y C. So we swip uh, we swapped it basically the order, yeah. and then if we just do the same thing we did on the left side. To get back uh, to this perpendicular line, we get um, 
MS Infinity I. MS Infinity I is like MSI Infinity or something yeah. like that. And we're done. Really? Yeah. So it's really that simple. Like once you just do a swap. Oh wait. I, I'm not I'm not sure. Because yeah. Oh, be, because I, I assumed uh that like we have this okay, maybe it's not Maybe that actually doesn't work. Hmm. Wait. Because we have like two different points S that like. Uh, oh, because we don't know EX and FY meet at the same. Yeah. I just assumed the problem. Yeah. But yeah, B H X I. Yeah, the tricky thing is H is defined uh, in terms of P. Well, well, no. H, like P, is defined in terms of H and L. So, yeah, you can't get rid of L. I guess. Yeah, that's a tricky thing. Uh, Yeah, we want to show this is harmonic and also this is harmonic. Uh... So what if, uh, let's see, I'm just trying to project this. So yeah, it's like we know angle I and B is 90, and we want to show that these two make something harmonic. So like if it was angle X and B that was 90, then we'd have an angle bisector, but it makes it a little tricky. Like, yeah, I don't think this would be an angle bisector. Yeah, we know this is 90, and we know this is 90, um, but...
Um, because, like we saw, if we could just project like without swapping, mm -hmm. like BX and CY, we'd be done. And that would be equivalent to showing that like XY, HL, XY and HL intersect on BC. But the intersection of BC and HL is like the X similar center, the, the two small circles. So our, um, and I think like the uh, BI HX being harmonic is just, just means that like X is the in similar center of the small circle and the big in circle. Can we do anything with that? Like, is there a better way to show that X is like uh, the in in well, uh, in similar center? So we want to show X is the in similar center of which two circles? Is it this and the in circle? Yeah. And then I think we're done in a bunch of ways. Okay. Then then also like H I B X is just harmonic and oh yeah, we, we use the other argument. Yeah. So. Yeah, because it's for in general the two centers and the x and millicenter and n and millicenter are harmonic. So yeah, it's just equivalent to showing that. Yeah, this is the. What well, what is the n and millicenter of two circles that intersect like this? How do you define it? Mm, it's. I think it's just the, like. The two centers are like the points where there's a um a homothety that takes one of the circles to the other, and the okay. insimilar center has like a negative uh factor, and the eximilar center has a positive factor. So you could still have circles that intersect like this, and they'll have an insimilar center because a homothety takes one to the other. Yeah. So it would take e to s. Um, oh, and since Oh, Sorry. yeah. And since uh, P is the middle center of the two small circles, and C is the X middle center of the of the other small one and the in circle, then by Monge's theorem, X is just we're just done. Like X is the in middle center actually. Okay. Or the the in middle center lies on CP, and it obviously also lies on the line through like H and I because they're the centers. Okay, so it, it lies on CP and it also lies on HI. So for that reason, by Monge's theorem, it's the incimal center. So the cross ratio is one. Okay, so actually, did we need? Yeah, because we needed to know we needed the moving points thing because we need to know that BH and CL intersect on that perpendicular, right? Um. So I'm going to type it up. So fix omega B and omega C. I think we don't even need it uh, because we didn't. Or did we ever use that M is on this tangent or on, on like the circle? Either one, because I don't think we did. I think the proof is just uh, X is the insimilar center. And then we can project through E because we know that EH is perpendicular and we know that, yeah, we don't use it at all, I, I think. Okay. Um, so basically if we project through E onto this perpendicular line, um, we'd find that like it intersects it at the reflection of M over I. Um, and then the same thing on the other side. Um, and so that would solve the problem. Okay. So we don't even need the moving points. Um, okay. So by Monge's theorem, well, but we need to know, like, we need to know that this, that MP is tangent to both circles, right? Uh, P was just defined as the intersection of HL with one of the common tangents. Okay. So that that's enough. That's enough. Okay, so we don't even really need that. That's sorry. That this is tangent is what you're saying. Yeah. Because P was like that point from the start. I think we uh, we even we used that somewhere in the proof. 
yeah, we we definitely use that in the proof. I think. Uh, that PM is tangent. Uh, not, uh, to show that PM is tangent, we use the fact that P is this uh, intersection of the common inter interior tangents, okay. because that's just like that lies on that lies on the line through the midpoints. So, so are you saying we do or we don't need the moving points part? Uh, we don't. We don't. Okay. So. Um, okay. So by Monge's theorem on so so let let omega be the inner circle uh, by Monge's theorem on omega, this, um, and this we would have p. Uh, C and the N Samilla center would be collinear. Um, but how do we know, how would we know that P is the N Samilla center of these two in order to use Monge's theorem? Uh, well, that's just like the N Samilla center lies on one of the common tangents, like common interior oh, tangents, and, and also on the line. Yeah. I see. Uh, but how? Okay. So, okay, that makes sense. Um, so, since P lies on HL and AD, it is the N similis center of omega B and omega c okay and then i think i put a u there um so let let omega be the inner circle um and then by monge's theorem um, omega, omega B, and omega C. Uh, CP and the in similar center of omega and omega B are collinear. And uh, then that, that, that means that X is the insimilla center because it lies on BI. Omega, omega B, since X lies on BI. And that means that um, B or BXHI is harmonic. And then if we project those through, uh, maybe it's better to, to change the order. So I could say, um, because ultimately we're going to project, so first we're gonna drop perpendiculars. Um, so yeah, so let me think about that. Uh, so let let we can just call the perpendicular from x to we'll just drop a perpendicular here. Um, oops, we got to the last letter of the alphabet, Z. Let's see if this will work. Oh man. I might have to zoom in to do it. 
Uh, let me try one more time. Let's try it like that. There we go. So that, um, this means that Z B um, Z B E M is harmonic. And then we project through H onto line MI. Uh, through X. Oh, sorry, through X onto line MI. Then we would have, uh, this is kind of weird, but I'll, this will just write it like this, infinity, uh, that's Z, and then E goes to, I'll say, that, um, um, and then, um, And that means that um, I, or how do I say this? MI intercept EX is the reflection of M over I. Call it S. I think that should work. Um, okay. And so that means EX and FY meet at S. So, so by a similar argument, FY passes through, through S. Um, and that means that EX and FY meet on omega. All right, very interesting. So yeah, maybe trying to do the moving points thing helped us figure this out. I don't know. But um, 